It's a delight to be able to have with us here in the studio, Mrs. Rosemary Jensen, founder of the Rafiki Foundation, uh, known to many of you all as uh, really one of the leading outreaches to Central and Eastern Africa to be able to raise up the next generation of godly leaders in Africa. And that ministry has borne so much fruit uh, for many decades now, uh, serving widows and orphans, and truly a remarkable ministry. And uh, Mrs. Jensen partnered with Ligonier uh, just a few years ago through her Bible Foundation. And this was a big campaign. In fact, it was the last campaign that Dr. Sproul was able to launch right. with Ligonier before he went to be with the Lord. Right. And uh, tell us about that idea of getting study Bibles to Africa, not just any study Bible, but the Reformation study Bible sent to Africa. And what was it that gave you the idea to do that? Well, the long story is that when my husband died, after a year or so after he died, I thought to the Lord, I, I thought, what do you leave? Why did you leave me here? What do you want me to do now? Well, I love Africa and I love the Bible. I always have. And so I was going to put those two things together. So I ordered a thousand Reformation study Bibles. And of course, I'm a new R.C. Spro well. And so uh, then I ordered another thousand. And he said, what in the world are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I told him that we needed a Bibles because they did not have them in the countries where Rafiki has its, um, its all its uh, villages. So since we didn't have, they didn't have Bibles, I wanted to give them to them. So that's when he said, okay, how many can we send out? And I said, well, and I couldn't think about how many we needed. And I said, uh, but, and he said, well, okay, we'll send out 36,000 Reformation study Bibles. And then we were hoping to do that over 10 years. So over we launched 10 that years, in right. 2017. And uh, so we were trying to finish that by 2027, 20, 2028. 20, mm -hmm. And we're well ahead of that pace. And so what we're coming together today to do is to announce the expansion of that campaign to send out 100,000 copies of the Reformation Study Bible by the original timeline of 2028. And so being able to work with you to know that we're able to get the Reformation Study Bible to people who can use them. Tell us about some of the recipients of who these Bibles are getting to. Oh my goodness, they are so thrilled. We, we send out mostly to seminaries. There are uh, 32 of them, about 33 seminaries. And there are 23 di different denominations that we send the Bibles out to. So we send them to church uh, pastors. We've sent out thousands to church pastors in, uh, in the countries where we are able to get those uh, the containers to. I think we have a clip of Dr. Sproul talking about the campaign and talking about we don't need to just be sending a few, but, but thousands. Yeah. And we'll, we'll listen to that now. We, we shouldn't be sitting here talking about sending thousands of Bibles. We should be talking about tens of thousands of Bibles. We're going to do We're that. We're talking about an investment right. that has long-lasting impact in the lives of people. <laughs> and you yet, touch one of those pastors and, and, and let him really be grounded in the Scriptures. That, that, that immediately goes to 500 more people. Africa is growing. The population is growing, and some demographers think that maybe even in the next 10 to 15 years, more than a billion more souls will be added to Africa. And along with that, of course, is the average age throughout Africa being about 19, so under 20 years old being the average age of more than a billion people right now. How important is it for discipleship and for the Great Commission to be able to get the Bible to pastors and to teachers and to those who, who will be able to reach the next generation? Well, obviously, it's the most important thing that we can do now is to reach the younger generation. And I'm just going to tell you, Chris, I, um, 
I'm an old lady now, and I will do not expect to be alive in 2028. But if I could see 100,000 Bibles <clears throat> out in Africa before I die, I would be so happy about that. So <laughs> it would be, make me the happiest person is to get these Bibles out because there's nothing more important for anybody to have than the Bible. And I do love the Reformation Study Bible. It's not a, just a Bible. It's, the, it's a whole library in one volume. And so I'm just praying that this will really work out. You can get enough, uh, get 100,000 out there. Maybe you could do it while I'm still alive. That would be wonderful. <laughs> I would love to see that happen. Absolutely. Well, your zeal for this effort to be able to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ in Africa has really galvanized much of our attention with international outreach. We have tried to prioritize the translation of the Reformation Study Bible into many different languages. Uh, so English, of course, travels far and wide in Central and Eastern Africa, but there are many nations that speak French. And so we're working on a French edition, as well as Arabic, of course, in that Northern region as well. Some people have been surprised when I've told them that on any given Sunday, there's more Presbyterians worshiping in Nigeria than yeah. there are yeah. in America. Right, um, right, Yeah, right. and they just, well, wow, they can't believe this, just the sheer numbers of yeah. the population right. there. What is it like to be able to bring the Word of God to God's people, and how do they respond to receiving the Bible? I wish uh, everyone watching this could go out and see how grateful these people are. Uh, when we have Bibles galore in this country, in the United States, but when these people who have nothing but little, maybe paperbacks or something of Bibles, and when they get these Reformation study Bibles, they are just ecstatic. And every place where we have been able to see these Bibles given, they are just, they, they hug us. I mean, they are so grateful. They just can't get over how great it is to have them. Yeah. Uh, Hosea 4.6 talks about God's people perishing for a lack of knowledge. <laughs> how does the Bible help us to know who God is? Well, there's no other place you can go find God in written form other than the Bible. It's fine to have things online, you know, in a cloud somewhere, but it's no, it makes all the difference when it is written down, and certainly that's what this Bible is so wonderful. In many of the places where we've been able to distribute uh, the Reformation Study Bible with the Rafiki Foundation and uh, through that amazing network of partnerships that Rafiki has developed over decades now, um, we're told that to get one of these study Bibles would be about a month's wage. I think right now, almost, I would say probably, probably two months. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, they just couldn't, they, in the first place, they can't even find them. But the second thing is that we're giving those Bibles to these people. And giving them to people who will actually use and them. And they will use, I mean, they will read every word. They will use them. They're so, they'll use them for their sermons, their, the pastors they will use. And so we're giving them to school teachers. We're giving them to pastors. We're giving them to seminary students. We're giving them to uh, any, uh, our teachers in all the schools. I, it's just there, and they just, they just hug them. They just hug them, and they will use them. You have dreamed significant dreams in service to the Great Commission in your life, you and your husband um, serving God's people in so many different ways. And how have you seen God provide for you all over the years? How many times have you just seen the Lord uh, answer these prayers, these very large petitions uh, that you have brought to the Lord to accomplish? And have you seen that just numerous <laughs> times in your life? Well, Chris, honestly, I never have had big visions. But I do see things that need to be done. 
And uh, it's, it's uh, interesting because we started Rafiki 36 years ago. I, I did at the beginning of it. And I never had any idea that we would be where we are today. Okay, so I didn't see all of that 36 years ago. But when you see the next thing that needs to be done, not what we decide we're going to do for people, but what they're asking us for. We don't decide, well, do we have the money for it? We decide this is what we're going to do, and then we're going to trust God to give us the money. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm old now, and, and he's never failed. He has never failed. That's my, that is my witness that the Lord has never failed me. My husband and I were missionaries. We lived in Tanzania. We lived in Africa for nine years. And then we came back and we started all these other crazy things that we're doing now. <laughs> and we came to know people like R.C. Sprawl and Ligonier and so forth. And so God has put these things together. He puts it together. I, I just, but somehow he puts the things in my mind. And then he makes it happen. I think this project has helped me to better understand the way that we can serve the Great Commission at Ligonier. Um, you have helped me to see how we can trust the Lord through um, having significant projects that we put out there, but then knowing that there is no lack of resources with the Lord. Right. And we can ask the Lord if He would use us. Uh, we are sinful people, and yet God is pleased to use uh, broken vessels like us as uh, these treasures of grace to be able to get uh, that sovereign saving grace and the testimony to His character out to more people. And it's, for me, it's become very exciting to go to donors and to talk to them about, here's what is happening in Africa. Here's what God's people are saying that this resource and many others can do to help the church there. And then to know that if the Lord wants that to happen, that if we are in alignment with this mission work that we're doing and the donor who wants to support that, really all we're then talking about is how large of a gift are they going to give because we already know something about that donor, that they're God's child. Every child of God is generous, right? Because what do we have that we have not received? Right. And to be able to then lay out this big vision, this goal, getting 100,000 Reformation study Bibles into Africa in several different languages over the next you know, five, six, seven years, and then who knows what's beyond that? You know, with well over a billion souls there in Africa, we recognize that we're going to be working at this. I, I almost wish that I had several lifetimes, as I'm <laughs> sure you do too, to right. give to Africa. Such is the opportunity and the need and the hunger and the joy that is coming along with the distribution of God's yeah, Word. Right. And you've been able to witness that, and I feel like I'm, I'm late to the party. Uh, you have seen God work through you and your husband and Rafiki for you know, well over a generation now. And I think we're all in awe, but maybe we shouldn't be because this is God at work through you. God's word at work, that is Rafiki's <laughs> motto. And we have seen that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've seen that continue to bear great fruit. So to be able to partnership uh, partner with you in this kind of effort is it's an honor for us at Ligonier. And I just want you to know and anybody else who's watching just to know what a privilege it is to be able to serve with uh, you and the Rosemary Jensen Bible Foundation and this network. And Rafiki to getting those Bibles That's right, there. this network yeah. through Rafiki. And you encourage us all and we're so grateful for you. Well, thank you because you all have encouraged me and made me so, so happy to do these things. Thank you very much, Chris. You're a wonderful soldier <laughs> in the fight.